Welcome to Natural Habitat Adventures, Daily Dose of Nature. I'm your host, Sunny Vanderstar. Today's topic is get ready for your Grand India Wildlife Adventure. And it will be presented by our fabulous NatHab expedition leader, Arpita Dutta. Arpita, thank you so much for being here today. I am looking forward to this presentation, so let's go ahead and dive right in. Thank you, thank you so much, Sunny. Um, and thank you everyone for tuning in today. And uh, it's been always a pleasure to share uh, all, even, even my weird topics, but this is a very important topic which we are gonna discuss. And uh, <clears throat> I hope it will help you uh, to think about the trip or exactly you know what you need to do. But there should be more actually but i'll try to make it as short and crisp so that you get the idea and later when you figure that out you can definitely uh, speak to our nha office to get more details and i'm always available in emails you can send me anytime with your questions and i'll answer you back so when when the name come i mean it's a get ready for but uh, when we say grand india the name says it all it, it's grand of course it's big and uh, india is often known for its incredible diversity i mean which encompasses various aspects such as culture religion language the geography and more so yeah again it's a it's a grand it's a grand place grand country and uh, and when it when it comes to its landscape it has like different ranges uh, from the himalayas we know the mountain at the top i mean in the north or to the coastal plains uh, in the south so and the country has desert lush forest fertile plains and various climate zones and with that india is one of the mega diverse country with abundant wildlife and ecosystem and the country boasts various biomes from tropical rainforest to arid desert you know there's so many things together so of course when it is big it is uh like it is difficult you know to get things uh sorted out i mean when we try to figure out that where we should go uh where we need to look for these animals and we have to do a lot of research and development and fortunately this all research and development and the uh thing has been done by nha and uh, keeping the biodiversity in mind of course i mean including all this what you see here uh just just to let you know about the diversity it is given here so imagine in a country where almost near about 16 more than 1600 mother tongues are there there are near about 20000 dialects so you can imagine that the diversity is huge so yeah with that um and we believe like many of our guests have been to africa before they sign up for grand india or anywhere else uh, because that's a, if you are in love with wildlife if you love to watch wildlife i think africa comes to our mind that okay this is the place where we get to see this wildebeest there's um, lion and and so many i mean these uh, african elephants the rhinos there are what not there are, there are a lot and it, it's easier to see because of the savanna land that is also there but uh, one thing before i start the grand india wildlife adventure i would like to tell you that um, this both this region actually offer amazing wildlife sighting in a different way you know the national parks over here works differently and i mean these are uh, these are protected areas which lead the high level of conservation and there are timings to enter and exit the park there are morning and afternoon drives and there are restricted zones and tracks these all are have been done to protect the wildlife you know from from the rest and for the conservation purpose also 
to save them from being too much exposed to uh, the human uh, human affairs. <clears throat> so only 20% of the national parks are open for tourism. And within that, we can come across so many that it doesn't really feel like only 20%. And uh, when we say that only 20% of the core area, let, uh, another thing I would definitely mention that it's uh, it's not like the core area means is the outside part, outside 20%. It could be inside, there would be a track which we need to follow within that 20% and there would be uh, different tracks, I mean, which can come to the main track. So we can, at that 20%, we actually can circ uh, circulate and we can have a good thought or check for the wildlife. And just like in African safaris, you go, you get to see uh, the animals there. For normal herbivores, we do see it, but for the bigger animals, uh, especially if I talk about the tiger, uh, the best part, and I think uh, over here, tracking animal by listening to the jungle not by any tracker or walkie talkie or any uh, call, uh like radio uh callers or anything it's it's just listening to the forest uh is the most interesting engaging and fun time inside the park you know watching the pug marks whether it's a male or a female it's a fresh one or an old one whether it just walk out from the water or not, you can understand everything by a pug mark. And with that, you have, if there is a movement of the big cat or the predator, there are distress calls from the other prey base. And then you sometimes get to smell the pee of the tiger or elephant or a sloth bear. And then you sometimes you get to see the fresh poop and you follow that direction and you try to connect all the dots nature is uh, showing or the signs of nature and then you reach and you get to see the animal i mean that is that imagine i mean i would say that all the ears i mean we we definitely feel that when we are into that same vehicle it's like a group you know and when the group is searching for the for the animal uh because you will get to know more during the orientation that how can you coordinate uh with the guide and with the ear so that will be more fun i mean that i can 100 percent i can tell you that this this uh experience uh, i mean uh, this experience would be really really unique i mean um because a lot of calculations timing uh tracks a lot of thing is involved into it so with that how do we start uh so for grand india we uh you all land in delhi and from here we uh move to central india which is called madhya pradesh in central India, we cover two national parks, which is Bandhavgarh and Kanha. And then from Kanha, we fly towards the eastern side uh, to a city called Kolkata. Um, and from there, we fly to the farther northeastern side called, there is a small airport called Jorhat. And from there, we drive to Kaziranga. This is this is how the uh, how the whole scenario goes. So you can see okay, we can we almost make a triangle, not the straight line wise, but yeah, we always almost make a triangle to it. And uh, this place. Uh, so when you get down in Delhi, uh, what you need to know is uh, the temperature and the place. And from here, from Delhi, from January to December, it is. It is a very soothing temperature, of course, November, December, January, February, it's a winter time and March and April, uh, it's really, it really becomes hot. You can see that it can go to 98 degree Fahrenheit. So, and uh, the coolest time uh, gets to 70 uh, degree. Sometimes it might drop a bit, but uh, overall, the average temperature remains like that. So you can prepare yourself uh, like that if you are starting from November. 
get yourself well led i'll come to that and all all in these places during this month the uh, the rainfall is not much because uh, and during the monsoon time it really uh, it it really showers well in india I mean, especially on the parks we visit uh, but uh, in monsoon the national parks are closed so there are no trips so we really don't need to bother about the monsoon but it is sometimes you can get one or two shower uh, that's that's the only thing but it, it is definitely not that bad so once you once we get down to delhi you there would be someone at the airport i mean once you come out uh, with a name plate uh, and you will see the nha logo of course and to take you safely to the hotel okay and uh, <clears throat> sorry and then we do the and after you stay back i mean depending on when you are coming um the day we start uh with the delhi uh city tour we have a city tour guide with us and uh, we would start and it could be a traveler or a bus depending on the pack size and to to start the journey there uh you would I mean, when we are traveling in Delhi, you will get the feel of the capital city. And uh, and the best part is the place from where um, from where to the point we go to the new Delhi to where old Delhi, you will see a reflection of old and new visual, you know, a horizon. You will get you will get that feel. We'll cross many government buildings and the tell it to guide. He, uh, I mean, he or she who will be there, they are amazing and they can tell you everything about the uh cities and uh yeah so this is uh, this is the uh i mean rashtrapati bhavan uh the office and residence of the president we cannot go in but our vehicle would cross so that you can see it and we will uh enter a few of uh you know um few of the mosque or temples in the in the in the old delhi old delhi place and you will get all the stories out there but for these places you for these places you might need to open your not mind you actually need to open your shoe as well as your socks so a sleeper will be provided uh, to you or if you wish you can walk barefoot uh, that is that is fine as well uh so this is this is there so if you if you know that you need to because we we don't walk much uh in in the delhi most of the time only when we are getting down we are walking around in that area so and you you know if you want to carry flip flops or um any anything which you, which you are comfortable walking in because there are small lanes as well where sometimes we have to get in and there are in old daily there will be good traffic so uh, in between we might have to walk so you can wear whatever you want but anything if you are wearing a shoe or something you might have to i mean you have to open it and then we sometimes visit the gurudwara which is a sikh temple the same uh process follow they follow there but with that shorts are not allowed like short skirt or uh short pants are not allowed especially for women so preferably if you wear a trouser that would be good otherwise they would provide you something which you need to wear and uh, again over here also you have to keep your shoes and socks open i mean you have to walk barefoot so and this is very clean area so <clears throat> no problem in that okay so uh, with that the first uh, thing what i need to tell you is uh, because after you get down to delhi we have to have a lot of uh, uh, like flights we have as well as travel and we have to enter the national parks everything in there and we have to carry the passport on us not only with us it should be on us and uh, there i have one thing to mention is please carry both the passports in case uh, there are any changes uh, which has been taken place between the between booking the trip and uh, coming on the trip because you might have booked a year before 
and if you if anything has changed changed in your passport so please bring the old passport along with you because your booking ids and everything would be according to your old passport and every national parks and everywhere the check or the passport check happens so precisely bring them both and uh, so yeah, after this thing, this is a very important thing to remember. Then we <clears throat> actually take uh, flights from Delhi to Jabalpur. Jabalpur is another city in central India from where we drive to Bandhavgarh, uh, near about three and a half to four hours maximum drive uh, to Bandhavgarh National Park. And after we finish Bandhavgarh, we drive to Kana National Park, and which is again another five and a half to six hour, five and a half hours of drive depending if we don't get into any traffic or thing then it's five and a half we would uh, reach kanha national park after we finish kanha national park we drive to raipur which is three and a half uh, hours from kanha from raipur we have to take the flight to kolkata and from Kolkata, we have to take flight. We will stay back, uh, stay back uh, that night in Kolkata. And the next day morning, we fly to Jorhat for Kaziranga. Again, from Jorhat Airport, Kaziranga, we need to drive, which is one hour forty-five to two hours, two to two hours, fifteen minutes of drive. And after we finish Kaziranga, we fly to Gohati to back to Delhi. Don't have to remember so many names. So in total, we have to take four uh, domestic flights. <clears throat> and for flights, uh, I would say the airport, uh, like you need to stand in, especially in Delhi airport, Delhi, Kolkata, these are like uh, bigger airports. You might need to stand in a big queue and you have to have patience for that. And in Delhi airport, uh, I mean, is very crowded and waiting um uh, you know i mean uh so you have to like the and the security check is very strict in all the airports especially with delhi because it's a capital as well as in calcutta airport and guwahati as well uh so for there we have to follow some process uh i'll tell you here at the same time uh, i mean even when you come for the when you sign up for the trip you you will be told again and when you come down to delhi and when your el meet you that time also all the um, i mean again you will be uh, getting all the informations what are there but if you are mentally prepared right now that would be the best is uh, <clears throat> in the security check uh, so first thing or any battery operated accessories should be there in carry on um no check-in luggage should carry anything which has battery not even like any anything like e-cigarettes or uh, you have your if you if you have like a uh, battery operated shaving kit that cannot be in your uh, or you have to remove the battery uh, so all these all these things are there so and for all the um so on your carry-on, you have your laptop, iPod, um, cables, watch, power bank, hard drive, and all you need to be out on the on the tray, like when you get in. And uh, you have your bags, water bottle, or any on a separate tray. I'm repeating this is one again. Uh, I mean, once again, is. Uh, for the domestic flights in the security check, all your electronics goods should be there in your carry-on bags. And anything sharp objects and razors, nail filer, cutter, everything in your check-in baggage, uh, that should be there. But except if you have any battery operated thing that should be in, that is coming on your carry-on uh, baggage. And when we do the security check, there would be a lot of trays which will be passing by. You have to grab one and take all your electronics good out on that tray. And the bag which you are carrying, that should be kept in another tray, not with all the electronic goods. Okay, 
So those will go in one and your bag, which were carrying those electronics will go in one. And if you are wearing a high ankle shoe, which has buckles or any metal thing, you need to open that and keep that into another tray for the security check. I hope <clears throat> it is, uh, it is, I mean, it is fine to understand. Uh, but again, I'm telling you for any confusion, please uh, send, an, send us an email. Uh, we, can, we can write it down so that you have it with yourself. So this is about the security check and uh, which is very important and, ima and imagine, I mean, or rather remember that each and every airport, we have to do the same thing. So, and we will be much ahead of time because we know that this is, this is a big queue. A lot of people is doing the same thing in front of you. There are a lot of confusions happens. So it is, that's the reason why we always try to be quite ahead of time so that we can process everything very smoothly. So you don't need to panic. We will be there around and it is very smooth. Just you need to keep that in mind before I mean, the last night when we are traveling or the afternoon, whenever we are traveling, you have to just keep that in mind that all things are kept separately and it is easier for and something which is easier for you to take it out on the tray. Um, so with that, we, <coughs> sorry, we start with the, and now what you need and why you need, uh, we'll go with that. So we start our journey with uh, Bandhavgarh. And uh, so Bandhavgarh temperature, you can see from, again, from this November to uh, April, we have our season. And the lowest it gets is in January but, or in December. I think by after 22nd or 20, 20 of the December, you can feel really cold. And uh, sometimes it drops, uh, uh, to, uh, to one or two so that time actually you you can get to see fraud especially more than Bandhavgar Kana, Kana gets, gets uh, more you know a frosty layer on top of the grass and oh my god the forest looks so beautiful anyway let me not get back and get there so yeah so uh, these are the temperature which is there March and April gets really hot uh, rather not really hot, but uh, from March onwards, uh, the summer starts, and by April, it will be it will be really hot. So uh, you have to carry according to uh, the temperature, depending on how much cold you feel. And no matter, even in March, though it's the summer has approached already, but still in the early morning, uh, no matter, we will be in the forest, so there will be a lot of shade. And because of the cool breeze, you might feel a little, uh, you know, a little chill. So it's better to carry a down jacket or anything uh, or a sleeves uh, like a pullover that will be good to protect you from that. And uh, yes, it will be very sunny even in uh, even uh, during november december when the sun i mean when in the middle of the uh, in the midday so it's better you protect your head as well otherwise uh, getting a headache and all these things are there and again monsoon this is not the monsoon time uh, we don't do trips here but you might get a little shower sometimes i mean you know just just uh, maybe a, a couple of hours of shower you might get um then goes to kanha and uh, kanha among these all three national parks we visit kanha's elevation is higher than all of them it's like 600 to 900 meter um elevation is there so it is bandha kanha is cooler than um sometimes gets cooler than bandhavgar so again in january you can see that uh, the temperature has uh, dropped to 80 degree uh 80 degree fahrenheit so <clears throat> yeah, prepare yourself in the morning, especially in winter. It is really cold. So, uh, and especially because it becomes windy at times, 
and the same time we will be in an open vehicle i'll show you this uh, vehicle over here if you can see it this is this is this is the type of vehicle we uh, do the safari in so it will be an open vehicle so definitely cover you need to cover yourself really well so that you can enjoy the sighting rather than shivering next uh, we go to kaziranga national park which is uh, which elevation is pretty low it's 40 to 80 meter in some apart i mean just around the national park and the temperature again you can see uh, in january it goes down like 76 uh, less than uh, uh, i mean less than uh, kanha and bandavgarh but still kaziranga you won't feel that shiver in the morning in kaziranga somehow because the elevation is uh, pretty low or it's not that windy sometimes uh, and by april march april you need to carry like all as uh, you know comfortable clothes you have because the humidity gets really high in kaziranga uh, because it's a brahmaputra valley area uh, and uh, so that that is one thing for summer i would say these winter uh, is very comfortable february march i mean even the summer is very comfortable in the morning only thing is by afternoon you might be uh, get little sweaty because of the humidity but in march april you get amazing uh, wildlife sighting as well so don't think that um, the season would change so if you, every season i would say that every season and uh, honestly because I work in that national park because of my conservation thing, even during monsoon, though we are not allowed, uh, I mean, tourists are not allowed to get inside the park, but in monsoon also, we get to see so many animals, but uh, sometimes mostly in uh, like any distress because of the flood. But yeah, these are the national parks where we cannot exactly justify or we cannot say that this is the best season to visit this park i think all the season is immensely uh, like you know beautiful and at the same time the wildlife sighting happens in every time i mean this there is no and of course in winter i would say during the winter the forest looks a little more beautiful because right after the monsoon the greenery uh, the green uh, of the forest, the different shades of the green and those, that, that feeling is a little different. But otherwise, in animal sighting, I would say that all the, all the, uh, like, throughout the season, it, it is good. <clears throat> so with that, you have come across the temperatures. Uh, so it's better, I would say, carry as less, I mean, as much as you need don't have to like carry a lot of extra things because all the uh lodges we stay they have the washing uh you know facility so the day you are coming you can give it to them you just can have two two pair or three pairs or two pans or three pairs of uh, i mean uh three uh shirts or t-shirts or uh like the pullover shirts that would do because if it's get dirty, if it's get sweaty, you can immediately after coming back, you can give it for wash. Um, so those those things are there. So carry as much as uh, I mean as much as you need, so that for you the travel becomes easier. Though we all are there to assist you in every way, but still for your own comfort uh, thing, so it will be easy. And uh, for winter, I would say rather having a big one. It is better to layer yourself up because as soon as the sun, uh, the sun starts rising or the time passed by 9, 9.30 or 10, you start feeling warm so that you can slowly, suddenly you don't need to be exposed to the cold or uh, to the air, uh, to the breeze so that you can slowly uh, open up, I mean, uh, uncover your, uh, I mean, layers, I mean, open the layers. So, sorry, sorry, that is, that is the thing. So you can actually wear fleece, a uh, down jacket, um or a sweat uh, you know jacket that would be good good enough and because we don't get rain but still i would say it is better to carry the rain jacket uh, for your for your uh, safety and especially if you're carrying your electronics uh, like camera and everything uh, 
a rain jacket for your bag is also important because we are in an open vehicle. So the more you get uh, make yourself like covered, that will be better. So this is what it is. I would say, I would suggest whatever you are wearing or bringing clothes, if they are all of RD shades, that will be good. And if you're in summer, prefer not to wear white because uh, most of the animals inside, they see in grayscale and white is like the brightest color uh, inside the forest. So that is there. So wear uh, little earthy, earthy color uh, clothes. And also, please uh, try not to wear any, uh, any kind of perfume um that would that would be really helpful uh for not only that because we really don't know uh the animals are very sensitive so for them even a little uh smell a little odor is could be you know uh could attract them even not for bigger animals but for smaller insects as well so try not to wear any perfume or any creams or lotions what you are using use it a little earlier so so that it uh, by the time we enter the forest it gets little milder okay this is this is the two and for shoe i would say that uh, over here we don't come down i mean we don't uh, come down from the vehicle or walk inside the forest so most of the time we will be inside the forest uh, inside the vehicle uh, only during the pit stop and during the breakfast, we come down and just walk around. I mean, just walk around in, in that area, in that same area only. So a comfortable shoe is good, but uh, so this is, it's a covered shoe is, is a better option for you um, because not only for the walk, but it is for your own comfort. But generally we don't need to get down from the uh, vehicle. We are not allowed to get down from the vehicle inside the forest. So with that, with different temperature and the sun, and especially in summer, it's always better to have your sun hat and sun gear, like sunglasses, uh, I mean, good shade, polarized sunglass is also fine if you if you get, though we don't need that polarized sunglass, but it is it is good to have it. It's, it's, your eyes need better protection, especially during summer. And you need the, um, you need to cover your ear you can use your buff or you can use uh, all the all the caps what we have for the winter and the hat is a must so please carry if you can if you want to carry two with you that in case if you lose one so that you can have the other one so just be make sure that these are the very important thing the sunglass the sun hat or the cap these are very important uh, for you. And uh, you will be sent, uh, I mean, you will be given the uh, NHA bottle or you can use your, I mean, if you uh, forget to bring it or if you lose it, um, or if you have a different bottle you prefer to bring, uh, you can, you may bring and you can refill that bottle from every station or every lodge we stay and the water is drinkable. I mean, it is safe to drink. So carry this water bottle. You know that we follow the thing that to le use less uh, like non-degradable products. And we try, not only try, we we try to maintain that, um, that no plastic, uh, if we can make it a no plastic and no garbage, uh, no to trip, that would be wonderful. So we keep on trying that we have, we got influenced so much uh, about the other travelers in other area, but in India it is little difficult sometimes. Um, but but still we are we are heading towards it. So this is this is why we need it. And keep your bag like uh, within a weight uh, so that and if you if you really need to carry a lot, then uh please mention that how many how much uh, you know your way has exceed uh, the the baggage so that the office know about it and we can prepare according to that and you might have to pay uh, I mean what extra you need to be paid that that could be uh, told to you okay 
sorry so these are the these are the important thing what you need to bring and uh, as i mentioned that uh, for toiletries and all these will be provided in in the lodges but if you have your own preferences uh, you can bring yours and uh, the hair dryer will be there at the lodges so you can skip that uh, your hair dryer and the rest uh, rest it's all depending on your use and your medicines has to be there with you that is that is very important thing to rem remember to bring it um so and here i would say as it's a wildlife adventure trip i'm sure that all of you would carry your binocular because binocular in this kind of park is very very essential very important and then you can show your creativity uh, with uh, your camera it doesn't matter whether you have a very good camera or a very normal uh, like uh, digital camera it's like capturing the moment because this is not a not exactly a photography tour this is all about what you experience in the park and the kind of sometimes the kind of story happening in front of us it is amazing to capture right the moment it's not about the quality it's not about how you see it it's all about what you are capturing so i'm i'm just completely saying don't get into like you don't have to think about the photography part but if you're bringing please bring extra batteries if you if you need to because we get very less time to charge it though at night but i uh, but I, just to make it sure that by night uh, you know you, if you get really tired then you have to keep waiting for your another bat battery to get charged up or in the afternoon you can do it but still if you for a safer side if you are carrying two batteries um, so it will be it will be a better option carry at least minimum two to three memory cards and carry i said is generally what i do is uh, i carry like small uh, memory memory card because if anything happens at least it will uh it will you know i'll have few pictures with me not like if if it is like 215 or 512 gb and all this i mean i don't know i mean how how big it can go but if we if anything happens if any corruption happens then the whole whole story whole picture goes so i always prefer this is for me personally i always prefer to carry few memory cards with me uh which are like in small uh memory uh like small me with small memory <clears throat> so please carry that carry a small flashlight uh to from the dining till your room though there would be somebody who can accompany you till your room and it is completely safe to move around in that area uh inside the lodge premises Though there are sometimes some wild animals you might get to see, so you have to be safe. You just need to follow the pathways. But you carry the flashlights for your better uh, view because there are because the pathways and everywhere the light is very dim, so that we don't disturb uh, the um, near uh, the animals and the habitat itself. So yeah, flashlight is there and uh, carry a small backpack uh, with you. So that you can keep your while we are on a go, uh, like on the safari vehicle, so that you can carry your camera, your binocular, because if it is raining or it will be dusty as well at some time. So that if you if you really want to put your camera in to save your sensor, it is better to carry a small bag along with you during the safari. And also this bag has to carry your passport which is important especially for bandhavgarh and kanha we need to carry our passport with us i mean on us okay and um, that is that is there so yeah these are the important things you need to uh, focus and then we have uh, how much cash you need to carry is uh, especially if you need to give any i mean all the tips and everything for all the lodges and everywhere it has been already uh, taken care of apart from the el uh, the expedition leaders tips is not uh, included in your thing so that is there and in case if you feel something 
more extraordinary definitely it is it is good uh, to uh, give the gratitude so yeah for that and for personal spendings like if you if there are a souvenir shops so if you want to buy something for that internet we do have wi-fi so i don't think but in case if you if you are taking it from somewhere if you are paying it then uh, it's a it's a separate thing for the alcohol consumption or any other food you are ordering apart from the meals we set meals we have you have to carry uh, your card or better you carry your cash that will be good apart from that you really don't need any cash to carry and how much i i can't say because in the souvenir shop how much you can shop that i don't know but yeah so uh, some good books are there on uh, the wildlife uh, and there are some beautiful hand painting uh, stuffs are there and some art uh, like art and uh, crafts done by the local uh, tribes so those will be something interesting to get in uh, from the souvenir so yeah that is there and uh, so the transportation happens with a open vehicle like this you can see it so depending on the pack size we have three to four people on each vehicle and this is the the inter uh, transport like from the lodge to lodge or from lodge to airport we use this uh, innova uh, bigger big innova and very comfortable drive again depending on the pack size the, the size uh, the number of the uh, like car increases so minimum two to three people go in in the in one uh, car like this yeah so this is this is how the transportation happens and again this is an open vehicle so be prepared uh, yourself and sometimes it may happen that we are standing in an open place because the tiger is about to come in there so there would be no shade so carrying your hat with you is must okay so then uh, the timings uh, that we need to get ready is mostly i mean for this is a very fast uh, paced trip and most of the day we start pretty early like before the break of the dawn so be prepared for that that you have to wake up really early but we will be ready with your hot cup of coffee or tea however you want it so so that we can boost up the energy get your enthusiasm back even if it is a morning even in winter early morning and we head back to the vehicle and we go to where's the gate so yeah and uh, so this is how it is so you have to be prepared yourself that you eat early sleep early wake up early and you come back in the afternoon if you want to take rest it's fine if i mean after your uh, um lunch or if you want to do uh like then you move around you walk around the area it's nice and then be ready for the afternoon safari so we have very less time in between so we have to make up in that but don't keep the timing in mind just keep that in mind that you have to really wake up early uh so mostly in winter or in summer it's like four by 5 to 5 5 15 we have to like meet at a certain place and sometimes it, it goes early so anyway this is this is the timing <clears throat> and i always say if we maintain uh, the time it's the best way to actually uh, make over a lot of pain because we never know on the way what will happen so if we have time there would be less uh, panic I mean, if anything happens, you never know because we go to a very, we go to all remote areas. Even if a tire get uh, like, you know, puncture, we have to, um, we have to like keep that time in mind. So be in, being in time at the place where we are supposed to meet, all of us supposed to meet, it is always good to be very punctual. That will really ease out the trip in a nicer way. Next is uh, the dietary preferences um, and any medical issues. If you have, please let the office know because it is very important and you have to like give a proper narration that exactly how you want it and why you want it. And for the medical issues, also let us know because that is very important for the ELs and the office people to know that if we can do any, anything to help you out. In, in any case, I hope nothing would happen and I would pray so that nothing would happen. But 
still to keep that in mind, keep your medicines and everything along with you before you leave the country, you recheck all these things together, your hearing aid as well. I mean, any, any small thing which you need in your daily life, like which is important, the most important thing in your daily life, please do remember it while you are leaving the country. For the dietary preference, of course, we, as, as I mentioned, that we stay in a very remote uh, place. I mean, all this, but these lodges are very, I mean, well equipped. Uh, only thing that we have mostly the local food, you will get to taste a lot of local food as well as continental, oriental. But uh, yes, um, they cannot produce a lot of like uh, all extra packages thing because, uh, yeah, to, uh, to get all the um, ingredients and stuff, it gets sometimes difficult. But I can assure you with this Grand India Wildlife Adventure Safari, you are going to have a food safari as well. Every time I think that I'm not going to eat, I'm going to skip or I'm going to have really little, but they make so delicious food that every time I gain at least few pounds when I'm, when I'm done with the uh, trip. So yeah, this thing happens. So I can assure you that everyone loves the food uh, out here and India uses a lot of spices and all. So of course that the flavors, it's a burst full of flavors uh, you will get. So be prepared for that as well. Uh, is you know, uh, suddenly, I mean, after telling this, I remember that like, just like the migratory bird, you know, they eat a lot and then so that because they need to travel. So you can actually keep a little air, I mean, start keeping your stomach empty so that you can come here and, you know, fill it up. Um, I don't know whether it matches or not, but it's it's really nice. Um, so yeah, please let office know about your uh, uh, these, uh, these preferences. And <clears throat> then we come to Central India, then, I mean, then the safari starts. And the Central India's park, it's mostly, you know, the mi moist, like mixed deciduous forest it has, it has highlands and, uh, you know, dominated by sal trees. Sal is a species of tree, uh, which is open in, the, and they have open meadows and, you know, uh, rivers. So this is almost look like the open meadow looks like this. You will get to see this kind of meadow in Bandhagar, this is from, uh, so in Bandhagar only. So this is what you see in open meadow, and uh, this is this kind of thick forest you see as well in central India. So you'll get a blend of both uh, type of forest and different kind of uh, like view. The the effect of the forest is very different. And uh, in central India, we meet uh, two uh, tribes, which is Gond and Bega. Bega are more like you know. Um, like they are, they are not, they, they used to be forest dwellers, but right now because the forest areas are uh, being protected. So they are, they live right uh, outside the forest. And uh, so, and the Gon people, um, you will see, I mean, both, both the tribes live around the forest and we might get a chance or if you have, if we have, uh, if we have time or uh, some other activity, I mean, if you are skipping the activities or anything, or, or rather we have a little time for them to do a village visit. You can actually go and check out that how these people live, how their buildings are made, where their food are stored or clothes are kept, how the children's are there. So you can get how they cook. Uh, how they sleep, I mean, where where exactly they make their bed and stuff, where they store their, um, the fueling wood and stuff. So everything you get a glimpse of it, that how do they live their life out there? Imagine in, the, in this whole, uh, you know, in winter, summer, so everything. So this is, this is like, uh, this is this would be a good experience to see them rather when you cross from one airport to another or you, when you drive through the, uh, countryside, you will you will uh, see the shift. I mean, there are different changes. You will you will can figure it out that uh, things are things are changing. So that's a beautiful transition. I always say that from the city to the village to the rural area towards close to the national park towards the nature, the shift is the shift is very quick because we drive and uh, it's beautiful. I mean, you, you can check out the check out the areas, and these are the these are the women uh, for any occasions or uh, 
any any performances uh, any i mean any performance in the sense even in their uh, in their tribe they they have to perform and all so they actually do uh, deck up like this and they look so beautiful uh, once you come then you will be able to see that even even there with very less makeup or no rather no makeup only a little bit of kajal this women look stunning the main men do as well uh, sorry if, uh, <laughs> if but but they all are very very uh, and they are very cheerful that's the best part of it and you will find a lot of bega and cone people in the lodges who are working as the housekeeping um in the fnb service so you can see their smile they, they are definitely they have affection and they know how to treat uh, the guest and in india of course guests are like guests are treated like god so i hope the guest uh do feel the same way um you know the the pleasant they they will be able to take the pleasant things from them and this is the gone um the gone art this is the type of art you will find you can actually buy it uh if you if any of the lodges or if any of the souvenir shop it has it's a very unique kind of painting what they do uh and this is the dance uh, of uh, the tribe uh it is very difficult to sit back and watch because at one point of time you will feel like okay your knee or your toe is actually got into the rhythm and they are they are also tapping and uh, then we move after the central india's part with all this uh, you know the cultural a little cultural difference with the tribes uh, the, uh, the two different tribes uh, the area the habitat the landscape and the different animals we head when we head back to northeast uh, which is from jorhat we take uh, kaziranga national park when we reach it's like a vast zone with with animals everywhere i mean it's 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 my i always say that kaziranga is like my first love and kanha is like my first crush so and it will always remain like that i mean no matter wherever i go whichever part i go in the world i would come i would love to come back to uh, kaziranga because that's that's a very uh, unique place for me so yeah uh, once you come you know that why i'm telling this so once you start getting in northeast you see all the fa the face the face the type of house they have and especially the tea estates and stuff you will you will see a huge shift even the vegetation the kind of forest what you get to see here is very unique and very different because the northeast gets again the one the biodiversity hotspot zone so of course the vegetation and the habitat change as well and kasiranga is placed uh, or is grown on the valley of brahmaputra brahmaputra is one of the one of the largest river we have in india and uh, mostly people do fishing and uh, you can see uh, they are their main occupation i mean who are living beside brahmaputra and that that's a reason why the land is so fertile that the vegetation and of course when it's a beautiful forest there are a different habitat and vegetation a lot of uh, it it actually attracts a lot of animals and birds you can actually find more than 700 species of birds in this uh, in this uh, in this national park so yeah now how this is about the national parks how the landscape is how it is and uh, this is how we do the safaris there so this is the thick forest what you see and we have tracks and those are not tarmac roads those are all this uh, like muddy marky or even if it's raining sorry uh, so the tracks are nice but it will be it will be no concrete no concrete is there so tracks are like this um and this is the vehicle this is the early morning in kanha national park and this is how we go and uh, we after we do the safari and one more thing i sorry i forgot to mention is uh, when the tickets have been booked uh, i mean for the safaris we cannot change the placement like every vehicle would have a set of guests um and we will be we will be having uh, the same vehicle and you you will be shifting but the number suppose i am there sunny is there or kendall is there we three are set in one 
vehicle so we will be there in one vehicle we cannot ch change uh, the names in the middle because how it is booked it will be like that uh, we can we have no uh, like we can't do anything regarding that so okay okay proceed to the safari and this is how this is how the safari looks we can wait here and uh, like depending on the forest that how the forest is providing us all the signals according to that we would take a call and this is the breakfast we do um, inside the park in Kanha and in uh, Bandhavgar so <clears throat> you can see there is a layout there is a uh, there is a uh, like place where we can do the breakfast and there we lay out we have a coffee we have we have good breakfast and of course over here also your dietary preference would be uh like uh, kept or it, as you mentioned as whatever how we how you will mention so we will move according to that and the food is very delicious again i must say and once we are done with the breakfast and yes over here in some places you might see uh outside this area you might see a lot of dog or animals like langus and all uh we we should not we must not feed them anything no matter how much they are wagging their tail and stuff we are not going to feed them because then it will be a disaster everything will come and it will be difficult for us to stand there and eat our breakfast um so yeah and the local communities uh, stay in the property because it 70 to 80 percent people are from the local community so we have to be very respectful towards the people because they are not very well trained hotelier they have the they are very empathetic people they know the culture so you have to have little patience if they are getting little difficulty to understand your words and we will be always there even even the lodge manager the general manager would be around um who would who would be able to help you out but in any case if you are asking something and if they take time to answer you please respect their that they are trying their hard to please you i mean they are all for you out there so yeah that would be that would be one thing to mention and name the next is uh, the animals we come across of course we cannot skip uh, the big cat uh, the majestic one and we have this elusive cat which is the leopard and then we have sloth bear there are chances of seeing all this and then we have the hard ground barasinga which is uh, endemic uh, to kana national park and uh, here are some the golden jackal the uh, the crested uh, you know the the changeable hawk yeah the changeable hawk eagle in kaziranga and this is the buzzard and we have a uh, crested hawk eagle and then we have the gore the largest bo i mean the largest cattle in the bovidian family we have uh, we would come across the greater one horn rhino and yes you can see the rhinos like this yeah isn't is it, wouldn't that be great i mean to see them all together like grazing and sometimes you see them fighting as well you can get to hear them i think hearing all the animals whether you get to see them sometimes i always think that if if we get to hear a like the roaring of a tiger that would be more than just seeing a tiger because hardly you get to hear uh these animals i mean doing any any boise so yeah you will get to you might get to see them like this you can see the open field and uh the land exactly the rhino habitat and then you get to see the asian elephant uh, and then my favorite what we all are looking at is the gibbons, the one and only ape in India, the hula gibbons. And yes, some uh, beautiful birds like great uh, hornbill, some endangered and critically endangered species of turtles and other animals. And another critically endangered species where which we end, I mean, with it, we end our trip is the Gangetic uh, river dolphin. And yes, Thank you so much for listening to me. If I miss out something, uh, please, please uh, 
share your uh, questions in the in the chat box maybe if not today but within a couple of days i will revert back with all the answers thank you so much and i hope to see you all someday thank you arpita thank you so much for helping everybody prepare and get excited that was so thorough and i am so grateful that folks will have access to this replay so they can watch it over and over again and tease out all the details that might be pertinent to them. Um, we do have just a, a minute or so for questions. So yes. let's, um, let's start with mosquitoes. Can you clarify <laughs> if mosquitoes are an issue, especially in November, and would you recommend treating clothing with per, per I was I was so delighted to get this question because I knew that this question is about to come about the mosquito. <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you, winter is so cold that you really don't have that mosquito trouble. Uh, I mean, over here. So you can be, I mean, see one or two if you're getting, it's fine. But there is not like you have a, you have to face any trouble for mosquitoes. So that I can assure you. Great. But still, you can carry your mosquito repellent or insect repellent. But sometimes, you know, if there's a big bottle of insect repellent and stuff, sometimes at the, I mean, in airports in India, sometimes they uh, throw that. I mean, they keep it uh, away. They don't let Got us it. carry that. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Um, and going back to the the airport situation at security yeah. check, do cameras need to come out of the camera bag? Yes, yes. Everything needs to come out from the bag to the tray. I mean, on the tray. This should be exposed. We cannot be clothed up. We should be exposed. <laughs> <laughs> I still remember one of, she was very sweet and she said she was actually having a, uh, I think uh, the knee replacement has happened. So there were some metals and issues. And she said, are, why are they, the, they are not asking us to just open our clothes and we just pass it? And, uh, and there would be some day we have, we might have to do that as well. So uh, please keep that in mind. Every electronic thing should be out on the tray, your laptop, your hard drive, and whatever I have mentioned not inside the bag sounds good well i think that's the last question we have time for today so i'll hand uh -huh. it back to you for closing comments yeah thank you thank you so much sunny uh, for hosting it so nicely and thank you everyone for joining in today and i hope uh, i'll be able to answer all of your questions i hope uh, I'll, I'll get uh, your questions and uh, with that this is about you know that uh, we we are traveling to area we are explorers i always say that we are not tourists we are travelers and we are explorers and we should be ready to take in whatever it comes in so we have to have that you know sporting mentality though everything we try to keep it on fixed schedule and stuff but if anything changes definitely if i am there or any other els are there they would inform you on prior uh, that this is the change has happened for what it has happened we are not going to uh, you know cover anything in front of you so be with us and hope to see you someday just let me know arpita we we actually watched your webinar so i'll know that okay today i have my gang my team with me have a great day have a great weekend ahead thank you so much take care thank you again arpita and thanks to everybody who tuned in Please join us again tomorrow for our next Daily Dose of Nature. You can check out this week's lineup, including registration links, on our website at nathab.com forward slash webinars. We did record today's presentation, and we will have the replay available on our website soon. With that, we'll conclude the webinar. Have a wonderful day, everyone.